Grant, we beseech thee, that in the firmness of this faith, we may be protected from all harm. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Words, dear brethren, from today's collect prayer. The end of the collect prayer is where those, those come from. And it's interesting. Let's start with a, a little bit of a, of a funny story. that Last night, Father McGuire sent me a little message poking fun at me for having mes- mentioned a sextant in my note from Father. And went as far as to say that only a Bostonian would reference this ancient maritime navigational tool. Well, I could take that in lighthearted passing as it was meant, or I could look at it and irrationally take it as a challenge. Challenge accepted. So the challenge being that I will use it in the sermon today. Um, for those of you who don't know what a sextant is, uh, a sextant is, is an old maritime device that is uh, used to measure the angle between a celestial body, primarily either the sun at noontime or the north star, and the horizon. And by doing so, a mariner would be able to figure out his latitude. And by all other means, he could also figure out his longitude as well. But um, in by figuring out his position in that latitude, he could help navigate himself along the seas before they had all the GPS and everything else. But as dependable as using a sextant and the North Star was for sailors, they knew that their greatest hope lied somewhere else. It lied in other celestial bodies. For centuries, the mariners of the world have relied on their prayers to Our Lady, whom they endearingly referred to as the Star of the Sea, to guide them to safety. And being that it is the month of May, we will talk about Our Lady, especially under that title of Star of the Sea. So, how did Our Lady protect the soul of the sailors? Well, by her grace and by her protection, not only were they able to be spiritually ready for whatever awaited them, but many times she would even work miracles to keep them safe from harm. One time, in uh, such an instance happened, in the very beginning of the 13th century, the early 1200s, there was a solitary French fisherman who was sailing off the coast of Marseille. And uh, a horrible storm quickly descended upon him, uh, catching him completely off guard. He was not ready for it or expecting it in any kind of way. And it was so powerful that as his ship was tossed about, he totally lost his rudder, fell off the boat. His mast snapped in half. He was at that time tied to the mast for for safety and had to cut himself free in order to not... uh, fall into the water and and drowned. And water was coming into the boat very quickly, causing it to start to sink. And he thought for sure it seemed that he was going to be lost. And he started to think of his family and all those he loved and how he would never see them again. And he was really sad and, and scared of that aspect. So he did the only thing that he could, which was he turned to prayer. And he started to pray to be delivered from the storm. And as he lifted his eyes up to heaven, he looked and saw, standing upon the rock face, the cliffside of the shore, was a beautiful and radiant woman standing there firmly and confidently. And he knew right away that this was a vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary and instantly fell to his knees and began to sing that wonderful and beautiful hymn, Ave Marie, Ave Marie Stella, that is, uh, Hail, Star of the Sea. And right away, the winds and the rain immediately stopped, and the seas all calmed, the waves subsided, and lastly, a very gentle breeze pushed his crippled vessel not only into the safety of the harbor, but all the way up to the shoreline right underneath the rock facing. Well, this man immediately ran upon shore, saw his family that he was so stricken over, and told them about what he had seen and the miracle that it was worked to save him. 
And the, that word spread throughout the town very quickly. And they built upon the hillside where Our Lady stood a chapel. And they, and they adorned the chapel with a beautiful statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And, uh, and today, actually, there's a basilica that sits upon that rock now still honoring Our Lady in that great miracle that she worked to save the sailor from, from the storm. But <coughs> devotion to Our Lady Star of the Sea is not just a devotion for mariners. It's not just for those who are, need, the, the, uh, need assistance in navigating, but it's rather a devotion for all of us under that title. So you see, we all sail on the sea as well. We sail on a different sea, as St. Ephraim had put it. We sail on the sea of the world. And the world is wrought just like the ocean. It is wrought with many dangers, more so than the dangers of the ocean. It's wrought with dangers not to just our body and our lives, but to our souls, temptations, and things that pull us away from God. But just like the sailors, Our Lady is our protection. She will protect us, and she will lead us to safe harbor. St. Bernard of Clairvaux said, If the winds of temptation arise, if you are driven upon the rocks of tribulation, look to the star, call on Mary. If you are tossed on the waves of pride, of ambition, of envy, of rivalry, look to the star, call on Mary. Should anger or avarice or fleshly desire violently assail the frail vessel of your soul, look to the star, call upon Mary. She is our star, and she guides us to the safe harbors. But for us, the safe harbors aren't some place that is just you know, some shoreline in the distance. But our safe harbor is the one and only true God, the triune God. And this is where Our Lady, Star of the Sea, ties in so nicely with our feast day today, the Most Holy Trinity, Holy Trinity Sunday. The safe harbor of the triune God which she leads us to is a passageway which she certainly knows so well, not only because she is in heaven, not only because of the fact that she was, uh, is the, the most beloved of our, our Lord, but also because of the fact that it was unto her that the mystery of the Trinity came to first. She was the first one to have this revelation of the most blessed Trinity. It came to her during the Incarnation, where the angel came and declared unto her that she would conceive of the Son of God the Father, and that it would happen by the power of the Holy Ghost. This great and wonderful mystery, this, some, this thing that reason can never grasp on its own. Yet, she never wavered, she never hesitated in her belief at all. She immediately assented to this great mystery. She immediately adored God as he is in three persons upon that revelation, being the first person to adore the triune God in her prayers. And, uh, this, and with that, we have for ourselves the one with the greatest knowledge of that destination, our God, our heavenly home. And she is our guiding star. She is the Maristella, that is, the, the, the star of the sea. In fact, did you know that the star, which is most used by, by navigators in, in the evening time for, for that use of the sextant and gauging and figuring out their destination, is the, the North Star, uh, or, or also known as Polaris, but it is also known by a different name, by that same name, Maristella, the star of the sea, because they looked at the North Star as they did, a, uh, as, a, as a gift from heaven, as a gift from Our Lady, and how Our Lady guides souls safely 
to heaven, the star would certainly guide them safely on earth. So they, they, they actually named the star Marisdal. But for us, we look to Mary in our lives. So we have the destination, heaven, the triune God. We have the star, our lady. Yet we still lack for ourselves the navigational tool, our sextant. Our sextant is our prayer. Specifically, a prayer which aligns the star of the sea with the destination on the horizon of heaven. That unifying prayer begins today as well for us as we celebrate <laughs> Trinity Sunday. Up until this point, since Easter time, we've been praying the Regina Che, a glorious prayer in and of itself, praising our Lord's resurrection, that great mystery for ourselves. But today begins the Angelus prayer, all anew. It is the prayer that commemorates the Annunciation. It commemorates that joining together of the Trinity and Our Lady. And for us, it is an extremely important and powerful prayer. It is our tool to guide ourselves along that way to heaven. Because it does a couple of things for us. It first off pulls our minds back. It takes us out of the world that we know with all its distractions, with all its temptations, all the things that take us away from God. It pulls our minds back where they need to be throughout the day. Put them firmly on the things of heaven, on the mystery of the Trinity, upon the great mystery of the Incarnation, upon the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And because of that, bringing ourselves back into that spiritual realm, it heaps on us a multitude of graces because of the fact that it takes effort to stop what we're doing, even though it only takes maybe not even a minute to pray the Angelus. Because we have to stop ourselves in the middle of our day to refocus ourselves back on God. He heaps great graces upon us for that. And lastly, by keeping our mind drawn back from time to time to the things of God, we will be aided in a great way in fighting temptation, A, by the graces, of course, but also because of the fact that we are trying and striving to maintain a spiritual mindset throughout our otherwise distracted day. This is the great importance of such a simple devotion as the Angelus. A ship, as we talked about before, is oftentimes knocked off its course by waves, winds, currents, whatever. But how does it get back to the line that it needs to be on sailing to where it goes? The captain corrects it by regularly checking his location and adjusting his head. Our spiritual life is no different. We are knocked off course by temptations, distractions, and our own human weakness. But the more frequently we turn our guidings, turn to our guiding star, that is the Blessed Virgin Mary, in our prayers, the more easily we may adjust our course, and the more assuredly we will arrive in our final destination, our safe harbor, which is heaven. And God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.